Welcome to What is in the Air, where we explore inspired living through simple life experiments. Welcome to another episode of What is in the Air, where we explore or embrace inspired living with simple life experiments and challenges. Today, we're going to talk about reading, specifically reading aloud. The idea of a read aloud is a practice in literacy. If you talk to any reading teacher or reading specialist, they can surely tell you about the benefits of read alouds and reading aloud to your children. I know that whenever I first became a teacher, the concept of a read aloud had been around for a long time. We have read to children as far as long, far back as we have books probably, but the idea of it as an educational practice was becoming more popular and written about more. And it became quite popular. And so at that point, there started to be more research on the value of reading aloud. And most of that research, even to this day, is about reading aloud or read alouds to children, which is certainly good and important. But we're going to be focusing upon read alouds for those of us that have reached adulthood. So let's dive in and let's start with a quote that I think is interesting. It comes from Beverly Cleary and it goes like this. We didn't have television in those days and many people didn't even have radios. My mother would read aloud to my father and me in the evening. So there's one thing that's interesting before I even get to the challenge, which we'll get to later in the show. I love this idea of connecting to a past practice that this idea of reading aloud and reading books to the family, that was a family pastime in certain times in, in history. And certainly it is for some families today, but not nearly as many, uh, I'm sure, statistically speaking, I would imagine. And this idea, I just have this this uh, romantic view uh, or nostalgic view. Uh, do you have to have experienced it for it to be nostalgic? Well, um, anyway, this uh, this romantic view of a fireplace and everyone gathered around and there is a parent who's reading and, and maybe the other parent or other family members are sitting and, and listening to it as well. So it's a whole family activity in the same way that it used to happen before um, mobile devices and personal computers came on and you would have five family members, each of whom is watching a different show in a different part of the house. You had this time, obviously, where people would gather around the television and they would they would watch and they would have a shared experience, entertainment experience together. And you go back before that. It happened with the radio where people would listen to syndicated radio shows and they'd gather and they would listen to those and there would be um, different kinds of performances or music or whatever else it might be. And then you go back further and it was the written word and people would gather around a book and you weren't connecting to someone outside It wasn't as if some live stream coming in uh, in terms of radio or television, but a person would enter your home by way of a book. They having written down their thoughts and their ideas or their story or stories into a book format, and you welcome them into your home in the form of that book. And you read the words that they wrote with your intonation, with your style, with your personality, and the others around you would experience that. And it's a really kind of powerful thing to me. It's 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 really, really a wonderful thing. Now, I don't know, maybe you're listening to this and saying, that is not exciting to me. Well, that's fine. Let's take a look at it from another perspective about a uh, well-being or personal growth and development perspective, because there's something there as well. So let's just think about this for a moment. How often do you read aloud to another person? Maybe if you have children or there are younger people in your life, maybe you do that. Or maybe you have an older family member or a family member who's ill and they could benefit from reading. That's kind of the adult example that I think of sometimes. How often do you actually sit and listen as others read to you? It seems like such a simple activity, but it's one really rich with meaning and with connection. Some do it often with their children 
For others, it might be reserved for an occasional public reading of an author, or perhaps reading to an ill family member or friend. Um, What might happen if you expanded this practice, making it a more regular part of your life? That's the question that we're going to explore in this life experiment in a little bit. But let's talk about the research. So there is some research. There is a pretty solid body of research that supports the practice of reading aloud to children, even from birth, even before they can really understand what's happening. There's a kind of connection that happens when someone is reading to another. We um, we know from the research that reading aloud builds vocabulary because when I'm reading a book to someone, it's prompting me to use words that I don't typically use on a daily basis. So I'm actually sharing a broader vocabulary, a vocabulary that's bigger than what, what I use on a daily basis um, as I expose a child to more books. That's one of the powers of reading. And as they develop a larger vocabulary, they have words that they can put to the thoughts in their heads. I remember as a child, and I'm not sure if this is a common experience or not. I've tried to talk to a few people about it, and some look at me strangely whenever I describe it. But I vividly recall as a child having daydreams and imagining concepts and ideas that I could not, I had no words for. I could sometimes imagine them as a picture or even symbols or something, but I had no way of communicating them or talking to anyone about them. I didn't draw, and I didn't have... I didn't have the words or the symbols that I could use to communicate them. So I felt stuck and alone in my head. And then later, it was actually much later, it was quite incredible whenever I started reading consistently. And and I developed a growing vocabulary pretty quickly. In fact, I had a time later, later in my late teens, where I I was reading a book a day. Um, one summer, I read I read a book a day, almost the entire summer, and I was reading um, books by science fiction. I was reading books about physics, about biology. I was reading history books. I was reading um, some classic literature and novels. And my vocabulary was broadening. And all of a sudden, I had these words that I could use, and and they would come to mind whenever I was trying to articulate an idea to someone else. It was so freeing. I felt more connected to other people. I felt less imprisoned in my own mind. So I know that's that's kind of that might be a little bit off from what I was describing, but that's actually the idea. So reading books in general, but reading aloud to children, it's pretty clear from the research that this builds vocabulary by exposing children to words beyond what they might otherwise hear in their home environment. Every new book and author expands the listener's opportunity to learn and to explore the sounds and eventually the meanings of new words. So for young people, the research seems to point out that even if I don't know what the words mean, I'm being exposed to them. So the sound is more familiar to me, and that familiarity is one step closer to my understanding or my developing a shared understanding around those words. Reading aloud also nurtures literacy skills, like there and there are a number of, of skills, of, of, of uh, decoding kinds of skills, overall familiarity with the written word. How is a book structured? Structured, the idea of introductions and conclusions and paragraphs and sentences and and individual words and um, the different parts of speech and how they're used, the different kinds of tools that are used by the author to communicate something, the, uh, using vivid language, and and reading aloud nurtures. Um, other kinds of literacy skills around syntax, around storytelling and comprehension. Creating these special moments with books is also obviously a pretty powerful way to nurture a love for the written word, that you are bringing something that you love and you're interested in and you put your personality into it. And as you share it with that little one or that other person in your life, it spreads and many people cultivate or develop a love of the written word from these read aloud experiences. And beyond this, certainly just as important as the rest, reading aloud is a beautiful opportunity just to build and enrich the connection between the reader and the child. Um, by the way, as we, if you're interested in this, because I'm not focusing the podcast largely on read alouds for children, if you're really interested in this, there's a an outstanding organization. It's called readaloud.org. If you read aloud 
Org. Check it out and you can go as deep as you want into exploring the power of reading aloud to children. I think it might have some uh, content that's not just about children, but that's really its focus. And there's, there's sort of a campaign to encourage us to read to our children more and for us to create more spaces where children can experience um, being read to. The value of reading aloud to children is incredibly hard to deny, but what about this other piece that we're going to focus on? What about reading aloud to other people in our lives? There's something intimate about reading to another person. There's a shared connection to the story, but also a connection between reader and listener. Reading a book can be an enticing solitary activity to be sure. I I certainly hide away in a book with the author all the time. But its communal capacity also offers plenty of magic, and that's something for us to check out. Uh, Some of you might be part of a book club, a writing group, or a formal writing course where public readings are part of the rituals or practices, but many of us rarely experience reading aloud as adults. This simple challenge is hopefully going to change that for you, give you a chance to explore and experiment with the nature of communal reading. So let me get to the steps here. I have this one broken up into seven steps followed by a handful of tips. So the first one, find a willing partner or a group of people who are open to joining you for this challenge. This is a group challenge, or at least it has to be a pairing. Explain that it will require meeting and setting aside 15 to 30 minutes a day for five consecutive days. Or whatever time frame and consistent schedule works for everyone involved. I create these experiments where, because um, consecutive days, because by doing it all very closely, it makes the experience more vivid and more memorable. You're packing them together, but maybe your life schedule doesn't allow for that. So maybe you're going to do 15 to 30 minutes every other day or every third day. Try to keep it close together though. We're doing this frequently. That's going to make it um, easier for you to reflect on what you're learning because this is meant to be an experiment. So if at all possible, try to get people to commit to 15 to 30 minutes a day for five consecutive days. And by the way, um, I envision this having been um, being done typically in person where you're sitting down with people in a coffee shop or your house, or uh, maybe even in at a, in a lunch area at work or somewhere else. Um, but you could potentially do this digitally as well. You could do this via FaceTime or your favorite favorite tool for real time co- connectivity. And it might be interesting to experiment with and learn about the differences. Do you feel the same connection or not with people? Second one, pick a chapter, a portion of a book, a short story, an article, a collection of poems, or something else that you want to use for this experiment. The reason I'm saying uh, don't pick a whole book, which you can, is just that um, I'm only challenging you to set aside 15 to 30 minutes for five days. And you're probably not going to get through an entire book in that time period unless it's a very short book. So um, I'm just challenging you to pick a piece of it. So you might just go with a chapter of a book or a short story, an article. Collection of poems could work pretty well. Collection of short stories might work well. And you do a different short story each time, something like that. Uh, Third piece is you're going to block off the time on your schedule and arrange a pleasant place to meet and gather. Where are you going to meet for this? Maybe there is a coffee shop that has a room that you can use or the local library. Maybe it's in your house. That's always nice. And you can uh, prepare a few snacks, have people over, turn it into a bit of a mini party of sorts. Uh, Whatever works for you, figure it out, come up with something that seems interesting and um, everyone in the group is, is good with it. Uh, The fourth step is uh, during the scheduled time, everyone hopefully shows up, they commit to it in advance and silence phones and remove other potential distractions. So it's really going to be a time where you can get into the reading. Um, Now you're going to get comfortable, enjoy a little small talk, and then the designated reader will start reading. You might want to take turns reading each day where one person reads one day, another person reads the next day, or perhaps there's a dedicated reader throughout the experiment. Try it out see what you want. Maybe you do this experiment a couple times and you try it in different ways, but see what works best for you and for the group. 
Uh, the sixth step then is as you have time at the end, you might uh, learn that the reading spurs conversation. If not, there's no need to force it. Just enjoy the time together. But um, that's where you may be blocking off 15 to 30 minutes, but it might be an extra 15 minutes for the conversation. I would say that for this activity, for the read aloud, consider saving the conversation and the questions for before and after the reading. But when the reading's happening, it's just a person reading and others are listening. So just consider that. Maybe you want to try something different on your own, but but I really suggest doing this kind of that kind of reading uh, experiment just to try it out and see what um, what it's like for you. The seventh one is I bet you can guess it's the last one, and it's one that I always suggest with every experiment. Dedicate time to recording some of your thoughts, feelings, and reactions, and do it throughout the week. Was this awkward at first? Uh, did that awkwardness disappear or intensify? What did you notice about yourself as a reader or as a listener? What did you notice about other people? What sort of connection did you experience with the book, with the reader, with other listeners? If you did this with more than two people, what was your overall experience? Did you find it easy or hard to follow the story or comprehend? And did that change over time? Because actually learning to listen to someone read takes time. It's an, it's a, it takes practice. Some people find it hard to understand what another person is saying when they're reading, but that's actually a skill that can be developed. And the more you experience it, uh, the more you, you can come to enjoy it and, and get more out of it. Now let's dive into just maybe three tips or so. First of all, I talked about uh, choosing something, not a whole book because of the amount of time you're allocating each day. But um, we read aloud, obviously, um, slower than when we engage in silent reading. Even if you think that you talk very quickly, you can read very quickly when you're reading silently, if you're not moving your lips. And you can expect to get through, for reading aloud, probably around 2,000 to 2,500 words in 15 minutes. So if you figure that a page is... It may be anywhere from, depending upon the book and how it's written, 250 to 400 pages, a um, uh, 400 words a page. Um, you're not really going to get through that many pages in this short time. But um, about 2,000 to 2,500 words in 15 minutes. So you're unlikely to make it through an entire book during this experiment. With that in mind, choose something that you enjoy, something short enough that you can complete, or something that allows you to explore a significant part of the work. So if you're doing, um, you may be getting through 10 pages or maybe eight pages in this short time, um, depending upon how long it is, might even be a little bit less, who knows? That's okay. You're not going for reading as much as possible. Keep this in mind though, because if you're finding short stories, you look for that kind of five to 10 page sweet spot and you can pick some short stories or a short story for each, each day. Second one, um, experiment with the length of time. Take times, um, taking turns reading and um, other parts of the activity to discover what works best for you and the group. So, for example, um, explore how much time do you want to spend doing a little bit of small talk, getting into doing the reading, having the conversation afterward. Experiment with sort of those rituals of gathering and talking and listening and um, see, again, what fits for your group. The last tip I'll offer is just this. As with any experiment, <laughs> I say this every time, your time for reflection is important. Consider how this experiment might influence the role of reading aloud in the future. Did you enjoy it? Is it something you'd like to learn to enjoy? It has some incredible benefits. And, um, uh, and maybe you'll decide that this is a practice you'd like to add a time where you and a friend or family member or others gather and read to one another. Let me finish with a quote. I love this quote because it comes from one of my favorite writers about education. Just philosophically, I resonate with a lot of what she um, has written in the past. Maria Montessori. Books are mute as far as sound is concerned. It follows that reading aloud is a combination of two distinct operations, of two languages. It's something far more complex than speaking and reading taken separately by themselves. So this is an experiment to explore that complexity. Enjoy. So that's the end of this episode. As a reminder, 
I would love for you to go over to whatisintheair.com where you can find an article version of this podcast. I write it all out either in advance or after each episode so that you have a guide when you choose to try out this experiment for yourself. So go ahead and check that out and share it on social media. Share it with other people, please. Um, Also, a couple of other links there. If you're ever interested in how I started with this uh, project, the What Is In The Air project um, in the first place, go ahead and click on that About page and you'll hear a story. I even tell a bit of a personal story and I do have a video where I talk about it as well. So you have it in written and video format. Not exactly the same, but um, there's some crossover between the two. Also, share your story. If you try one of these experiments in your life, maybe you don't even finish it, but um, you try it, I'd love to hear from you. And there is a form that you can fill out to share your story. Sometimes if you try it and you have some things at work, or maybe you have some ideas on how we could, uh, how others might want to adjust it, you can offer your own tips. I'll take what you send in and I'll use it to adapt and adjust the article on the website after the fact. Um, And then the last one, there is a submit a life experiment experiment tab. You can click on that link and there's a form where you can actually submit your own life experiment. Maybe you have one like this or similar on any topic about human flourishing and well-being um, or just uh, leaning into more inspired living, then I'd love to hear from you. I do ask that um, it have some common elements though. And you'll see if you go over to submit a life experiment, there are these categories that I use. They're actually the same categories that are every podcast episode and they're in every article on the website. So that's what is in the air.com. I want to thank you again for listening to this episode and some of the others. This is a grand experiment for me. It's a really enriching activity and I love connecting with so many of you and people reaching out to me after the fact. That's, um, that's pretty great. So thank you everyone. I will see you on the next episode. Please take a moment and listen to this brief message from our sponsor, Locus Mindset. Locus Mindset helps highly motivated professionals and entrepreneurs master an internal locus of control so they can attain better health, greater wealth, and stronger relationships. You can start today with the Locus Mindset 15 course. This four-module course is your step-by-step guide to move forward beyond present circumstances and create the life you want. Learn how your brain works when it comes to goal setting, pattern matching, fear, emotions, anxiety, behaviors, and so much more. This program is ideal for you if you're motivated to move forward in your life. You've been feeling stuck in important areas of your life and are sick and tired of repeating the same life patterns, never seeing any real change. And you've tried everything, or what seems like almost everything, and nothing seems to be producing change at the very core of how you feel and how you think. Locus Mindset works with the science of the mind to produce real and lasting change. This is the only goal-setting, mindset-mastering program that you need because it works with the mind in a clear, evidence-based way to achieve real and lasting change. As you just heard from that advertisement, this episode of What is in the Air is sponsored by Locus Mindset. And just because you're a listener to What is in the Air, this podcast, you can actually get a $25 discount to the Locus Mindset Mastery course. And all you have to do is go over to locusmindset.com. That's L-O-C-U-S-M-I-N-D-S-E-T dot com. And when you sign up for the course, there is a place to enter a code. And the code that you're going to enter in order to get this what is in the air only discount is only for you. You include that, you get a $25 discount. And I think you'll find it to be a really valuable course. I've personally gone through it and I found it to be incredibly valuable. There's some wonderful content there and some cutting edge research and insight. But as you will know, if you don't already from this podcast, content is not enough. You have to do something with it. It's about changing some patterns in your life and some behaviors and some ways of thinking. And this course will give you some great steps to do that. So check it out. See what you think.